Hello, and welcome to Schmidty's Guide on gearing up to E5 DPS in Secret World Legends. This guide is targeted towards players who have somewhere between E3 and E5 gears worth of item power, and really want to get some gear that they're going to be willing to settle into and bring up all the way to Legendary feeling good about it. So we'll get to that in just a moment, but first things first, the quality of life patch has just come through, making several significant changes to the game. The first one is that if you open up your uh, weapon window, which defaults to N, and you go to this new anima allocation tab, you will see that instead of uh, your talismans giving you combat power or healing power or hit points anymore, they just have a power rating, and you can use this marker to move that power around any way you want to. It defaults right here at this 10%, 90% for survivability and damage, but we are DPS in this house, so I want you to grab that marker, crank the DPS all the way up to 11, hit commit, go to your build manager, save that to your DPS, so then instead of 90-10, it saves to 100% damage, and now we can start. So we're gonna look at talismans first, because they're kind of the foundation of any build you have, because you'll be slotting pretty much all the rest of the stuff you get for your gear onto these talismans. So you want to make sure these talismans are good. So the first thing, obviously, is make sure they are all three pip talismans. And on top of that, you're going to want to try to make them be extraordinary. Talismans that have these extra beneficial effects, like Ashes of Crushed Cities. Whenever you hit the same enemy three times in a row, you deal extra damage. Uh, most of these talismans are going for somewhere between 20,000 and 50,000 marks of favor, which I'm just going to be calling moths. Uh, this one is one of the few exceptions, going for about 100,000 right now for the Radiant version. But you don't have to pick this one up first. You can start with something like uh, Skitty's Ring, which doesn't have a great effect for DPS, but it's extra damage once in a while if you purge or interrupt something. Uh, then also you can get the Radiant Seed of Aggression, which is also fairly inexpensive and has a very solid, flexible effect. In this particular slot, there are two other talismans that are also good, the Spectral Essence, and the best in slot, which is the Egon Pendant. The uh, thing is that for those, there's going to be a uh, an economics problem where there may not be a lot of supply of really good ones, or if there is one, it's going to be incredibly expensive. So if you are willing to lay down the moths and wait for the availability of one of those, go for it. They are a little bit better than this one, generally speaking. Then for our wrist slot, we have the Radiant Iron Silver Bracelet. Uh, in a dungeon setting, you are basically going to be doing this every single time you hit, because your opponent will always be either exposed or debilitated. So it's a great talisman as well. In the luck slot, we have two good talismans. They are the Gambler's Soul, which you see here, or if you're willing to put in more moths again, the Cold Silver Dice are also a great option here, generally considered to be a little bit better. Now the Waste Talisman is an interesting one. So I have the Jaguar Cord because as of three days ago, it was pretty much the only extraordinary talisman that was worth anything, and even it I don't think really worked. But now, with the Quality of Life patch, there is a Waste Talisman for each different weapon. And each of them has different effects. Along with that, there is also a new, uh, the developers are calling it Agnostic Talisman which is one that works regardless of what weapon you're doing. It'll always do a little bit more damage or give you a little bit more healing depending upon which thing you're doing. Uh, that one is called the Generalist's Belt, I believe. Meta naming. Uh, and if you are looking to see what the weapon specific ones are, I will put the names of those in the description so you can look them up and see what they do. Then we have the Radiant Sigil of Ambition. Uh, if there are things, if there are mobs in the group, this is good. Also, the Razor Fossil is a solid choice here. Uh, both of them are perfectly fine. Pick either one. And that'll be our baseline for our talismans. For the weapons, I'm not going to get into weapon specifics here. I'll be running nine different guides here shortly after this one. Each one focusing on a different weapon as the primary and going through all the different secondary options. So if you're looking for what weapons are good, pick the one... Uh, pick the... Uh, guide that has the weapon you're looking for. We'll be going over that. But you do want to get uh, Mark III, the three pip versions, and you'll either want Energy or Havoc. They are both pretty much on par with each other. Both of them are really good. So pick either one, and you should be doing really well with, for yourself. Now we're going to go with Glyphs here for a second. 
So now that we sort of know what's going on, the game's been fleshed out a little bit, we know that the general way that you want to gear up is you want to put critical rating or fierce glyphs on your weapons. And those are somewhat expensive, so you may have to sort of build up to each one of those, but we do want to get the three pip ones, the intricate glyphs, because we don't want to have to waste a bunch of marks of favor bouncing back and forth if we don't have to. Then on your talismans, you're going to want to have one accurate glyph, which gives you hit rating, and then you'll either want to have four more of those fierce glyphs that give you crit chance, and two devastating glyphs, which will give you crit power, or you'll want to have three and three. Uh, both of them are quite good. The 3 and 3 option obviously is going to cost a little less because these devastating glyphs are much less expensive than the uh, critical rating fierce glyphs. And it's going to do about the same damage. 4 and 2 I think generally does more damage depending upon your build, but they will be so close. We're talking like 1 or 2% that you'll be doing great damage either way. So that's how you're going to want to glyph. doesn't really matter where you put your glyphs, just try to make it so that if you swap out pieces, you don't suddenly lose hit rating. So you may want to put hit rating on all of your luck talisman items, for example, just so that when you swap this out for a different one, you don't suddenly start glancing all the time and go, oh, whoops. Uh, then we're going to look at signets. Signets are also slot bound here. So, for example, for the head signets, they will all affect the elite abilities in some way. And uh, right here I again have the Agnostic Signet, which just increases the damage of all elite abilities. If you know you're going to be main-handing rifle for the next six months, go ahead and grab the rifle-specific one. It does do a little bit more damage, but if you want to be flexible, leave your options open a little bit, this is uh, the Agnostic Signets are a great way to go. So there are also Signets here that will decrease the cooldown of your elite abilities. In general, over time, they do the same amount of damage the damage increase or just getting to use your elite more often. However, each time you use your elite, you burn four energy. So unless you are using an elite skill that doesn't do damage by itself, but is still good for DPS, and there are a few of those, you'll want to grab the damaging ones because they'll allow you to use that extra energy you would have wasted on another elite skill to instead be used to hit with your power abilities or your special attacks. And that makes it so you'll do more DPS overall. So the finger talent or the finger signet increases the damage of your basic abilities. Pick one up. Extra names in the description. Next signet increases the damage and healing of all your power abilities. Pick one up. Names in the description. Then you'll notice the wrist talisman's signet slot is conspicuously absent. Uh, this is because right now the only thing you can slot there is for an ultimate ability, which isn't really part of a real DPS rotation. It's like for trying to save the party from wipes when he's only got 20, 30,000 hit points left and everybody else is dead. And it's probably going to be the slot where auxiliary signets are going to be once auxiliary weapons are put into the game. So I'm sort of in wait and see mode for this particular slot right now. The Lux Signets all have some proc that occurs when you critically hit. Laceration is far and away the best item to be using here for a DPS. Pick some up even though they're a little expensive. Then the Waste Signets all affect gadgets. Again, there's one that increases damage and one that reduces cooldown. They do about the same damage, so we need to find something else that differentiates them again, much like the Elite one. In this case, there's no energy, but... Gadgets tend to be more for utility and flexibility, so the more often you can use them, the more often you'll be able to have the chance to use it for what you want to. If you need to dash back into a fight with your rapid engagement module, for example, you're not really using it for the damage so much as the ability to get back into melee range with your melee build that has a hammer in it, so that you can keep doing damage and you lose as little time as possible to just not being able to attack. And then finally, we are going to have our Occult Talisman's Signet, which affects dodges. I'm a big fan of acrobatics for two reasons. First, in dungeon situations, that ability to have burst movement with your dodge is a really good. And dodges are actually being used as procs for weapons. There's a pistol, extraordinary pistol, that gives you a matching set any time that you dodge roll. So it's actually being used for procs that may be of considerable use in the future. Honorable mention here, though, is Agility, which 
increases your speed for a short period of time after you dodge roll. Both of them are solid options. And that is all the gear. The only thing we have left to look at real quick is uh, the gadgets that I think are going to be useful as a DPS. First, if you are meleeing, of course, we've already seen this. Rapid engagement module is great. Uh, then, one of the great reasons why the cooldown is so important on your waste signet is because the best DPS gadget in the game right now, which is the legendary version of the metabolic accelerator, doesn't do damage. It just gives you more energy. So the shorter the cooldown, the more often you get energy. I like Superluminal Bridging Device. It is a nice little backdash, an untargeted dash, unlike the uh, Rapid Engagement Module where you need to dash towards a target. And it actually teleports you, so you can dodge through things that would kill you otherwise, because your character will just vanish and reappear on the other side of them. And then, um, that's not the one we want. There we go. The uh, Distractor is point blank AoE, make sure you take that into account, but it is a detente in case you happen to be doing enough damage that you take aggro. Then we got some honorable mentions. Uh, Phoenician Support Stratagem is quite good on fights where you might get stunned, such as the last fight of Darkness War, or uh, fights where you get hindered, specifically in the fifth fight of Polaris during the Primordial Dweller. The adds will hinder you and then explode. Not only does this stop the hinder, but this also negates the damage from the explosion. You can actually use this to just save yourself from an explosion that would otherwise do, you know, five times your maximum HP worth of damage. So that's pretty good. Uh, I also like the Mistress's Bashosin, which is good for uh, getting adds off of you and giving yourself more time to get rid of them before they kill you, or giving yourself more time to get to the tank so the tank can take them off of you. Then, once we get to E5, you start having to cleanse yourself. This is just uh, a Sibikashi's hoop is a great way to just uh, cleanse yourself sort of passively. You don't even have to pay attention to it. And the Compact Catastrophe Shelter is good for fights like uh, the Trauma Driver in Hell Raised, where you're not always going to be able to get away from an attack like Molten Metal that does a ton of damage in an AoE, but you can lay this down and if you're taking 30% less damage from this extra protection rating, it doesn't kill you anymore, which allows the healer to just heal you up and you keep on fighting. Whereas otherwise it would just kill you, and then there was nothing you could really do. You would have had to have a barrier on yourself or something. So it's just nice little uh, silver bullets for specific fights that I think are also quite good. And with that, you are ready to get your weapon, set up a build, and start working on a rotation. I will be doing nine guides, each one focusing on a certain weapon as the primary. And if you're looking to see what the builds and rotations I think are good for each one of those is, I will see you there.